crazy. Budget. Shot. No cassette. Eight percent. So as governor, would you support the end to prison expansion and redirecting those funds towards job creation in the communities most impacted? And also, would you repeal mandatory minimums for drug sentences for all defendants? Um, with respect to prison reform, I'm a supporter of prison reform. Uh, I think actually a number of states, um, actually primarily in the South, have demonstrated that through uh, alternative sentencing and, and other mechanisms they've been able to significantly improve their um, recidivism rates. I also think with respect to mandatory minimums, we should take a good look at all of those, uh, especially with relation to uh, nonviolent crimes. Um, and I've been impressed with the success that a number of um, communities have had with drug courts here in Massachusetts, and um, I would like to see us move uh, to expand that as well. I'm against mandatory min minimum sentencing, and I would support legislation to repeal it. I think that the, uh, it ties the hands of judges and courts to really understand what individuals need to be able to give them the best chance of getting back into society, which is our goal, it should be our goal, with respect to our corrections and criminal justice system. I'm very much for a real reform in our criminal justice system. In Massachusetts, it's not working. Uh, we have 24,000 people in prison, 12,000 in county houses of corrections, 12,000 in state prisons. Uh, Half of those people don't belong there. They, they, um, they have substance abuse issues, they have mental health issues. They need an alternative which offers them help and support and treatment so they can get back into the economy and instead of being locked in a jail cell. Some of our institutions, frankly, are so old that they're not very safe or I think very useful. But I don't think we need to expand on prison. And I think it's very important that we recognize people make mistakes, that they sometimes need a second chance, sometimes a third chance, and, and use those funds to focus on education and help for people who have mental illness or um, behavioral health issues and make sure that we do our skills and our workforce training. In some instances, for people who are drug traffickers, uh, I do believe that people who sell drugs, it's not just a victim of crime, particularly if they're making money and exploiting other people. I have said we need to do better, certainly with first-time offenders, people who have addiction, and making sure that we are fair in the application of drug laws. And I have said that we should be more flexible moving forward on looking at parole eligibility so that some of those folks who are in jail for serving, uh, serving sentences have an opportunity if they uh, get education credits, if they're able to show that they can re-enter the community and we should give them help in re-entry, uh, can, can leave sooner. So th there's been talk about the idea of stopping prison construction and how that can have an impact on the very serious problem of mass incarceration. A lot of what's happened with mass incarceration is driven by the tough on crime laws that started even in the 1980s. And we're living in a world today that's a result of those ultimately failed policies that have been very destructive. So judges should have the discretion to decide what is the appropriate sentence for an offender. Um, there's a bad combination now between legislative action and executive action that thwarts the independence of our courts, um, and it's destructive. So I do support that. What I have said is that within a month of becoming governor, I will suspend all new prison construction in Massachusetts. We're talking about a billion dollars between now and 2020. And I've said that I would want to redirect some of that money to build or create more detox beds, more step-down units, more recovery units, and more community-based care. The goal is to reclaim lives, not to incarcerate people. I have always opposed mandatory minimums and the three strikes law. I would have vetoed that law had I been governor. That's a different position than one of my opponents Attorney General Martha Coakley took. I think we should give far more discretion to judges to pre prescribe the sentence that they believe is appropriate, but I don't think we should use hard and fast rules. Every case is a little bit different, and I think we should treat every case individually.